Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how you can turn any image whatsoever into a sticker style image, all right? And we all know how those sticker style images look like. We can search them on Redbubble, for example. Let's go ahead and go to Redbubble. And we can see, if I just look at any kind of basic sticker here, let me click on stickers, and let me click on laptop stickers, for example. All of these stickers have this white border to them and the hard part is taking an image that is essentially like taking an element out of an image editing it in such a way to where we have that border around specific images i'm going to show you how to do that the reason why i'm going to show you how to do this is because not all ai tools perform stickers with that little border around it and some people like having that border around it now once again i'm going to say the same thing i said in yesterday's video when i showed you guys how to create thousands literally thousands of stickers within seconds with just a click i'm going to say the same thing guys if you're doing stickers for print on demand you got to realize that that is the least profitable item out of all the different items out there now, granted, if you're uploading the design to Redbubble, you can upload it to t-shirts, you can upload it to hoodies, you can upload it to aprons, you can upload it to so many different things. That's more than just a sticker. But in the same time, if you're operating your own website, I highly recommend you go for the most profitable potential product that you can kind of go for. All right. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial here. So how do you do it? So first thing you have to do is you have to take the image and you have to edit all, everything around it. So let's just say I wanted to turn this image into a sticker, right? What I would have to do effectively is two steps here. I would have to darken everything around the element that I want to be the sticker. And then I would have to remove the darkened element and turn it into a transparent background. I've actually already done that using this tool called Luminar Neo. And really, you don't always have to darken it. You just have to make it abstract or the opposite of the color of the actual image. So we can see here these images of like these angry kind of fruit images. Uh, these images, you could also find them at Fantasy Labs. If you guys are familiar, Fantasy Labs, we update uh, every 28th of the, of the month. We upload a new, um, I guess you could say, month worth of content, of templates, of images, basically assets that you can use for your print on demand. So I'm going to be uploading one of the many folders that we have here. Let me go ahead and check right here you could see folder number four um, it has here this cool strawberry design that I really like that I've actually already done this too so you could see here it has a white background and the whole point is it could be dark it could be light it just has to be abstract compared to the um, the background right so the element that you want to focus on has to have a abstract color compared to the background so let's just say if this design was white I'd probably go for something pink, red, black in the background so I can separate them. That's my whole goal. I need to separate them. Now, there's two ways of separating um, here. The first thing you could do is you could use Luminar Neo. So, for example, this is an image that I was separating earlier. I'll kind of scroll down. And I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. Do you see this image? This image did not originally look like this. In fact, it looked like this. But if I want to turn this Spartan into a sticker, like just all around his body, I have to start darkening the outside and I have to be specific with what parts I want to darken, right? So you could see here I was slowly working on it. It is a lot of work, but this is another example. You could actually tell in this image there used to be clouds all around this cross right here, right? But what I want to do is I want to turn it into a sticker. So I've darkened everything that I don't want. And the way I do this is I go over here to edit, go over here to tools, go over here to develop, then I go click on masking and I click on the brush. And now I have my brush. I can switch the size of the brush, right? And I could brush over the things that I want to be dark. So like right here, I want to darken this. I want to darken this, maybe a little bit here, right? I just want to have it an even dark tone to it, right? And then when I go over here to adjustments, I'm going to decrease that exposure. And notice what just happened. You literally just saw a perfect example. So this is what it once looked like. That's what it looks like now. See, critical difference there, okay? And you would do that with any kind of image you want to apply this to. So here, I have this helmet picture. If I really wanted to turn this into a sticker, I have to figure out, okay, first thing is, what do I want as the sticker? Do I want just the helmet? Or do I want some of the stars and some of the colors in the background as a flag? 
what do I want, right? So you have to be able to discern that. And in this case, I've done most of that. I've darkened the background here, okay? So that's step one. You have to darken the background. I'm using Luminar Neo. You could do this on a lot of different tools. The thing that I like about Luminar Neo is it has this smart kind of feature where if I darken, like let's say I go over the edge a little bit, it will it will kind of understand what frame of the photo's in and it won't darken that certain aspect, right? So here... I was crossing over the rocks a lot, but I want the rocks to be part of my image. Um, and I was crossing over with the brush a lot, but um, it didn't really darken it fully and it actually kept the border alive so that when I export it, I can go ahead and do that. And that's there's a lot of AI smart features within Luminar Neo. If you watch my channel, relatively consistent, you know I use it all the time. All right. And I'll leave a link in the description if you guys want to get grab your hands on it as well. All right. So let me go ahead and click disk here. And let's just call this flag cross, okay? And let's hit save. The size is already good. I don't need to upscale it. Um, and by the way, it does have an upscaler built in. Uh, it's sitting at around 4,064 pixels to 6,112 pixels. So it's a nice size. I'm going to take it and I'm going to upload it, okay? So we have, let's go to my desktop here. Let's go to downloads. Let's add this one. And let's actually, for good measure, let's use one of the Fantasy Labs graphics as well, which let's see which strawberry I like. I like, um, I like this one a little bit more, just my style. So let's go ahead and grab it and let's upload it here as well. And let's have an empty canvas on Canva. All right. So I'm going to take the image. Okay. And I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go ahead and expand it to the size that I want. The size is really doesn't, it's not too, you know, it's not really that important right now, but expand it to the size you want. And then I'm going to go over here, edit photo and background remove. Now, most of the time, like the overwhelming majority of the time, uh, Canva does a good job at removing the background properly. Sometimes you, like this, you might have to go in and clean it up just a bit. So here I might go here with my eraser. I might have to zoom in like around this section of the cross, for example, and I might have to, you know, just trim, trim that edge a little bit, just make it a little bit cleaner, right? Just a little bit. Okay. And I could decrease the size of my brush, right? And just make sure it fits the way I want it to, or it looks the way I want it to look. Okay. Not everything is going to be a hundred percent perfect all the time. I'm not sure why my mouse is jumping around like that. I'm definitely not doing that, but, um, yeah, you can kind of see here what it's doing, right? So I'm going like this here. It's probably something on my mouse pad that's catching, but you get the point. Okay. And that's, for example, one side of it. And then I would go here. Let's just say I don't like this little curve right there. And then we can kind of trim certain areas here. Let's just say, let's look at it. Let's just say it's pretty decent now, right? I could even like erase this whole section here, right? And once again, this is with Canva. Um, the benefits of this is, the or the way to get the best output is really, really do a good job darkening what you don't want to appear because Canva will pick up on that and get rid of it with its built-in background tool. And I know a lot of you do use Canva just as I do. So um, I, I personally, right now with the way I'm designing, uh, Canva is my number one tool right now in terms of creating designs. I don't know if you guys feel the same way. I've definitely tried other tools and I do like other tools. Don't get me wrong. Um, but Canva, I just, I feel more comfortable with it. I work relatively quickly with it and speed is key, right? Speed is key. Hence, you guys know what it is with the, uh, POD design course. When we talk about the design course, Canva is usually my focus right now because speed, speed is important. So anyways, let me go ahead and zoom in here. Let me get rid of this. Okay. And let me get rid of this. And this is just about as good as I want it to be. So I'm going to go back here and this is taken care of now. And I have two options. The first thing I could do is I can save this because this is essentially a step in the, in the system, a step in the, in the game, right? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go here, save here as a transparent file. Now I've noticed Canva can sometimes glitch out moving to the next step. And this is exactly why sometimes I do download it because I've noticed Canva does glitch out sometimes just in case Canva glitches out. Let's go ahead and test this live. So the background is removed. It's effectively a different image. I can go over here to edit photo now and I can go over to my shadows button. 
So shadows is a special effect and I could click on the glow. Now, once again, sometimes when you remove the background, Canva glitches out and it won't apply the shadow properly. Okay. So what I'm looking to do is I'm going to create a white border. All right. And I'm going to have it relatively, actually, before I even do this, let me change the background color so we can notice what the stickers uh, outline will look like. So we go to edit photo, we go to that shadows button. And what we need to do is the shadow needs to be non-transparent effectively. So here I reduce the blur all the way to the left hand side. I make sure that my color is white. Okay. And my intensity is all the way to the right hand side. So now you could see the shadow, uh, or excuse me, the, the outline is just around the image the same way that of a red bubble image would be for a sticker okay now i understand that you guys a lot of you are slowly kind of walking away from red bubble and i and i kind of understand that just because of the pricing and things like that but for the people that have their own websites or maybe even doing this for some other platform this is a good option so that is right there an image so when i download this I can go ahead and trans download it in a transparent format. And this is page 18. So let's go ahead and download this page 18. And it should download in a transparent format as I've asked it to. And let's go ahead and open this up and see what the deal is. Yep, it came out perfect. So it went from here to here. And this is now a sticker style. Uh, if you're printing stickers at your house, you know, you're using the different machines. It's good to add this outline because sometimes when you get that machine to cut it, um, it could kind of cut into the graphic. But anyways, let's go ahead and test this with another image just so I can kind of prove my system, prove my point here. So we have this image of the strawberry, okay? Now this strawberry, half of the work is already done for us because of Fantasy Labs where the background is an abstract color compared to what's going on in the image, right? Now, don't get me wrong, I might have to do some editing here but it still takes a lot of the effort out. So I'm gonna to go to edit photo and I'm gonna click BG remover. Me clicking the BG remover is so much easier than a lot of the different tools I have that I could do use out there that are manual to remove my background. So look at that, that makes life so much easier. It's taken care of for me, all right? Now we have a background color. For the sake of this uh, tutorial, I'm gonna go with a little bit lighter of a background color just so you guys can see the kind of differences in colors. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply the saving process. So I'm just saving the image once again, because like I said, sometimes Canva can glitch out and I've had it happen to me personally. Um, I'm not saying that happens to everyone, but I had it to me personally. And also I actually just noticed something, which is a good valuable point. I really shouldn't have downloaded it because if you see, there are these little speckles in the image right here and that's going to come out in the quality of the sticker so i'm actually going to go in here and i'm going to remove them so i'm going to go to bg remover i'm going to go to erase and i'm just going to erase these little speckles right here because i don't want it to come out in the quality of my image okay or my sticker rather and go ahead and do this now i will say stickers there's no shame in selling stickers i know i've had this spiel earlier into the video where i talked about profitability and things like that you can be profitable with stickers depending on how you sell them on your own website or maybe even in Etsy. Now with Etsy, you are going to be competing with other sticker sellers and there's a lot of them on Etsy. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing. A lot of people who complain about um, saturation in the market, that's not really much of my complaint. My thing is, is that you're going to have to be aware that in some sort of way you will have to... Uh, adapt to the marketplace. If if let's just say a sticker pack is selling for $7, you're not going to be able to sell that same sticker pack for $80. Does that make sense? But if it's your own website, there are certain things you absolutely can do. Uh, to a point. I mean, it's you know, people are logical at the end of the day. They're not going to just buy it just because you sell it, but you will have the ability to charge sometimes 3, 4, 5 times more on your own website and I am a personal uh, I personally experienced this. So anyways, so now that the image is clean the way I wanted to, I removed the speckles. I went ahead and saved the image in Canva just in case, right? I can go ahead and take the image now and I hit the shadows button and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to hit glow here and we're going to create a white glow in my case the blur amount is going to move all the way to the left, so it's going to be effectively zero. The intensity is going to be high, and you can see here now we have a border around. 
depending on how large I want the border to be, I can increase the size of this. So I can make it like this, for example. And that is, this is the maximum size, which honestly, I don't think I would go for the maximum size. Um, I like this look. I think this looked pretty decent. And there we go. And sometimes, like I said, can, Canva does glitch out. So right now it looks pixelated. It all looks all jacked up and weird. Leave it the way it is. I'm going to go ahead and hit download, transparent, and then, and by the way, I'm doing transparent so I can get rid of this background here. And then what I could do is over here, page 18, hit download, and it will should download the way I want it to download, which is a clean looking sticker. So let's see. Um, there you go. All right, there you go. Super simple system. Anybody could do it pretty much, and it turns any image into a sticker. Now, once again, the most important part of this is creating the abstraction and background. So an image like this, if once again, I wanted to turn it into a sticker, first thing I have to do in this whole process, I have to dictate what do I want the sticker to be? Do I want just the helmet? Do I want the stars included? Do I want the flag included? What do I want? Do I want these white stripes and red stripes included? Do I want the paint splatter included? Sometimes it's just solely dependent on your abilities. What can you, what do you have the time even to use? Instead of just skill, what do you have the ability in terms of time? Some people don't have time to sit there with a brush and start darkening everything. And I could just show you once again, I would go to develop masking brush. Okay. And I start brushing out some of this paint splatter and you could actually see it's helpful because it has this like red neon kind of light thing. You can kind of see what's going on here, which shows me what it's highlighting, right? I can go with something like this, and then I go to adjustments, decrease that exposure, shifts the design completely, right? So that's important, and it's important to be aware of that because if you don't dictate what part of the design you want as a sticker, then, I mean, you're going to get, uh, you're going to run some issues. Uh, I think for me personally, with all stickers, they have to have their own outline style, meaning they can't be a squared image. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But squared images to me as stickers are not fun. You know, to me, if the sticker had an outline like around the body of the character, it becomes more interesting, cooler sticker at the end of the day and probably more profitable. At the end of the day, when you make the thing look better, people are more inclined to purchase it. I think we can all agree on that. So here's a live example of what the image once looked like. And then when you decrease, decrease, excuse me, that or increase that darkness around, it looks like this. Now, this image is for a shirt. I actually turned it into a shirt. Um, so it's an AOP shirt all over print. Um, so it's for a shirt, not for a sticker. But I could turn this into a sticker. I could. I would have to darken here, right? I would have to create a... Uh, kind of like a curve here that ends so that the the clothing or whatever it is doesn't touch the edge of the photo. I'll have to do this on both sides. And then I would run it the same way. I would remove the background, do the outline, and there you go. It's a sticker. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this video helps out. I'll leave a link in the description to all the different valuable resources that pertain to this video, including, including excuse me, Fantasy Labs. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out. Bye.